Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's Tips and Tricks webinar. Today's topic is going to be on IPS optimization and investigation. Please use the Q&A chat if you have any questions during the webinar. We'll make sure we get to those. Um, our presenter today is a security engineer from Connecticut, Hector Velez. Hector, what do you have for us today? Hi, everyone. Uh, I've got investigation and optimization for IPS. Um, so a little bit about myself, uh, Hector Velez, SC out of the Northeast. I've uh, been with Checkpoint for just over five years now. And um, that, that's basically it for introductions. I can probably get started. Yep, go for it. All righty. So on today's agenda is going to be introduction to Checkpoint's IPS, basic recommendations, IPS performance impacts, investigation methods, and then finally, optimization. So intro to IPS. So IPS is not a, a totally new technology. It's been around for quite a long time. Uh, we started in the 80s with the antivirus on the PC standalones. Um, then we move on to the 90s to the Stasteful Inspection Firewall. And then finally, in the early 2000s, we've got IPS and IDS. Uh, IDS being detection, IPS being prevention, of course, and that's Checkpoint's ethos. Um, Checkpoint's IPS offers real-time threat prevention through deep packet inspection, defends against known vulnerabilities, zero-day exploits, and emerging threats. Integrates seamlessly with other security features for comprehensive protection and provides granular control and customizable policies. So some of the elements of protection for Checkpoint IPS is it detection and prevention of outbound malware communications, known and unknown exploits and CVEs. It also detects against pr uh, protocol misuse on common protocols such as HTTP, SMTP, POP, and IMAP. Tunneling attempts are also prevented, as well as bandwidth hogging and generic attacks. So now that we have uh, Checkpoint's IPS out of the way a little bit, we can move on to the core protections of IPS, or the, the, the two sides of IPS, really. So it's the core protections, um, which are built into the operating system. They might change or be modified with a software update. And on the other side, we have threat cloud protections, which are dynamically updated signatures. And that's all comes from the threat cloud. So core protections, good to know, uh, because it uses the protocol parser and is installed with the access control policy. And threat cloud protections, good to know, because it uses pattern matcher and is installed to threat prevention policy. So I mentioned threat cloud. If you're not familiar with the threat cloud, that is Checkpoint's repository for all of our hashes and signatures. Um, all of our IPS information and other information lives in the threat cloud. It's all leveraged across all of Checkpoint's products. We have more queries into the threat cloud on a daily basis than Google does in one day. OK, so now recommendations. So although this is not really investigation or optimization, um, these are recommendations we can make before you actually get to that point. So one, making sure that your operating system is updated to 8120, 8110. Um, anything is better than uh, 8010, 8020, 8030, 8040, all of those are end of life. 8040 is approaching end of life now. So making sure that you're updated is definitely good. Making sure that your IPS protection update frequency is set correctly. Um, so you can change it from the default, but you can choose to actually uh, update sooner. You know, the sooner you can do an update, the faster you get those IPS protections and those signatures. And you can set new protections to be in staging status. You can automatically put those in prevent, or you can just have them in detect and you want to follow up on those. Next, you can do is subscribe to IPS emails, which is the IPS-news at checkpoint.com. Uh, that's how you get updates for different signatures and CVEs that we're adding to the IPS so that you can update it on your own uh, and which profiles those are actually activated under. So touching on staging mode, this is now called follow-up. But basically, staging mode allows the tracking of newly downloaded protections, and you can sort by performance impact or severity if needed. Um, so basically, staging mode is good because you get that list of all these new updates, these new signatures, and you want to make sure that they're not causing any overhead, any overload on the CPU. So you do a follow-up flag on it. You follow that CVE, that, that protection, and you make sure that once it's in detect, that if it's not causing any overload on, the, on, on your traffic, on your network, then you can move it to prevent. And here in this list, you see I have my follow-up flag, but then I can sort by all of my follow-up flags. And on the cleanup options, I can either remove all of my follow-up flags or I can highlight this whole list 
and move all of these from detect to prevent. So like I said, the follow-up list is definitely one that you want to use. Um, this is how you keep new protections uh, really optimized for the profile. This is before the investigation, before the optimization. This is something you do beforehand. This, if this list gets too large, it's going to be cumbersome to go through and, and really follow up on these. So the smaller you keep it, the better it will be. Okay, so impact. So it's important to note that some protections require the use of more resources or apply to common types of traffic, uh, which may adversely affect the performance of the gateways. And this is directly from the 8120 admin guide. I'm sure we are all familiar with the fact that IPS does cause some overhead, especially when you talk about the performance impact. Um, so some of the performance impacts here are you know, starting at very low where there's no degradation, but then you start moving up the, the list to the low performance where you now you're looking at sim simple signatures um, and a medium performance where it's more complex, HTML logic, PSL, HTTP responses. And then really once you get to higher critical is where most of the CPU usage is happening. High being protections with our ex which are executed on all ports and high, which is really doing or critical, which is really doing deep packet inspection. So uh, it's going to be a significant load on the firewall when these protections are enabled. So on the other side of it is, do I have these in detect? Do I keep them in prevent and active? Um, to detect is always going to consume more CPU than prevent, um, especially if the performance impact rating of the protection is higher critical, like I just mentioned. If you have a, a critical CVE that's being uh, protected against and it's in detect, then it's going to cause a, a huge overload on the appliance and you're probably going to want to uh, optimize that, change that, move it from detect to prevent or inactive if it doesn't apply to you. Um, but detect logs the connection and follows it. That's why it consumes more CPU than prevent. It's going to log multiple, the same type of connections as well. Um, so, you know, adding in all of those connections is really going to increase the CPU overload. Um, like I mentioned, inactive is the least consuming. It's just bypassing. It completely, it's inactive. And the whole idea of this is to examine your policy, decide if anything that's in higher critical for performance impact should be in detect, or if you should just move it to prevent or inactive if it doesn't apply to you. Okay, so now moving on to investigation. So there's a couple of things that you can do to investigate if your IP, IPS policy needs to be optimized. First thing you can do is turn IPS off. You can do IPS bypass under load. Take a look at the IPS stats command, use the threat prevention health checkpoint report, or utilize professional services. Okay, so turning IPS off. Turning IPS off is definitely not recommended, but the whole idea behind turning IPS off is if you do a CP view, you go to the CPU and overview, you can take a look at the firewall worker usage. And if you have another screen open where you can go, you know, IPS off, turn off IPS and examine the firewall worker usage. If you see that the usage, usage goes down, then you can put two and two together and say, my IPS policy is, is needs to be optimized because it's causing a huge overload on the firewall workers. Two reasons why this really is not totally recommended. One being that you don't want to turn IPS off. You're going to be not protected by IPS. And two is that you don't see a huge difference in the firewall worker usage when you have other threat prevention protections enabled, such as app control and URL filtering. Then there's bypass under load. Um, so this is more of a dynamic version of turning IPS off where you're letting the logic of the operating system do this for you rather than you doing it yourself with IPS off. This was not something that was used a whole lot before 8110, jumbo hotfix, a 110 and 8120. Um, it really didn't do exactly what we were looking for it to do before these, these updates, but now it actually does what it's supposed to do. It's going to actually dynamically turn off IPS when it needs to, when the gateway is under heavy load. So this will be logged. So if you do see that uh, in your logs that IPS is being bypassed a lot, then you'll know um, your policy probably needs to be optimized. Then there's the pattern matcher tool. This starts to get a little bit more advanced. This is now something that you would do in the CLI. Um, the only issue with the pattern matcher tool is that it doesn't provide clear cut information. It does show you which IPS protections were called into action and how many times they were called into action, but it really doesn't give you that, that full picture. Um, and this must be analyzed by R&D. Uh, here's the command, fwpm underscore stats, and that's the SK associated with this. IPS stats is a little bit of a better command. 
Um, the only issue is that right now it looks like it's only for standalone and not for distributed environments. This tool generates a report that includes both IPS and pattern matcher statistics. Pattern matcher being you know, the command I just showed you previously, uh, it would show you both of those pattern matcher and, and IPS. Uh, so this is going to help administrators analyze which IPS protections or IPS components cause performance issues. It's going to be outputted to the IPS underscore stat underscore output underscore file CSV. And this is directly from the 8120 admin guide. This is also pretty advanced. And like I said, right now, it looks like it's only for standalone environments. Okay, IPS collector, uh, another one a little bit more advanced. And uh, the usage is going to be a little bit different. Usually this script is used to find performance issues. It's gonna be used when replicating a current issue. So let's say that you had an issue last week, issue went away, well, this week the issue's back. You would run this IPS collector, it would collect the debugs, and I, it can then be uh, analyzed by uh, you know, TAC. Uh, the only issue with this is that it causes high load. So if you're already experiencing pretty high load, then this is not totally recommended because it may cause the, the box to either freeze or reboot. This is from SK128432, and like I said, uh, it's pretty advanced. Then we start to get to the uh, the less advanced and, and the, probably the, the best method right now, in my opinion, to check for uh, IPS overrides. So this is the health checkpoint report. We just called HCP. It's a little easier to say. Uh, it's a self-diagnostics utility program that executes a set of tests. It's going to scan the system for conf configuration bad practices any issues that may affect the system or any historical issues that may reoccur. It's gonna provide a comprehensive st structured system assessment with a verdict of either success, error, or warning. And this is a test that was previously disabled. I believe now in 8120, it's enabled by default, but to check that you just run the HCP dash dash show disabled test command. It'll show if the threat prevention is disabled or not. If it's disabled, you can run the enable product command here and enable it. The whole idea behind the threat prevention report is that you're going to get a whole section that says threat prevention configuration, performance best practices. And you're going to see here under best practices, uh, IPS should be no overrides, but the conf current configuration is that there are 233 overrides. So that gives you a pretty good idea that your policy needs to be optimized because the best practice is to not have any overrides. And I will touch on overrides in a, in a later slide. All right, optimization. So there's a couple of things that you can do to optimize your profile. Uh, just manual, just the profile cleanup, using a smart event view template and utilizing professional services. So the first is straight up going right to your policy, going to your IPS protections, going to the profile that you currently are using and just sorting by performance impact. From here, you can just decide, do I need any of these enabled? Can they be in an active or do they need to be in prevent? Are they in detect? Um, all things to consider, because like I said, detect is going to be the most consuming, uh, prevent a little less consuming, and inactive, not consuming at all. The next thing you can do is use a smart event custom view. Um, so this was created by a Checkpoint employee. It was posted to Checkmates. It's a great custom view. You would just import the CPR file, and under views on smart event, you would see that it says moving from detect to prevent. Um, so I believe moving from detect to prevent was something that we um, gave a presentation on in CPX 2020. And it, it's something that we've been trusting for quite a while because like I said, detect is going to be more consuming. So this custom view is going to give you all of your protections that are in detect, all of the protections that are in prevent. And you can see here all these in detect and you can change them, change them from here to prevent or inactive, whatever suits you the most. Then there is profile cleanup. So this is built right into the operating system, the smart console. You would go to actions, cleanup options, profile cleanups. This is next to the remove all flags like I showed you earlier. Uh, but now this is profile cleanup. So this is great for performance impacts and great for removing any custom user settings. Um, so you would just click on that profile cleanup. It would take you to the action screen. You want to remove anything that is user modified. So this is my profile that I modified a bunch of things on and I want those removed. And I, I can also clear staging from here. So this is the follow-up. I can clear that whole list right from here. And we're gonna see here, so this is an override. So a little bit earlier in the health in the HCP report, we saw that there was 233 overrides. That is this. That means that the protection 
uh, had a different action before and then it was overridden, overridden with detect. And now we want to clean that up, remove that detect and put it back in an active um, and it'll kind of clean up the policy there. Last thing is Infinity Global Services. So kind of shifting gears here. Uh, at this point, we've done everything that we can as an administrator, went through the investigation, went through some of the optimization. But at this point, let's say that you feel like your policy still needs to be updated even more. It, it can be optimized even more. Now, at this point, we're going to go with Infinity Global Services. This is Checkpoint uh, Professional Services. And the section to focus on here, even though we have tons and tons of services that we can do from IGS, uh, the transform piece is really where we're going to want to focus for IPS, and that's the optimization and fine tuning. An administrator, uh, it, or, I'm sorry, professional services is going to come in. They're going to understand the customer goals and requirements. We're going to overview and assess the threat prevention policy, the current threat prevention policy. Um, look at the threat prevention configuration and tuning, making sure that it's going to be tuned properly. You're going to build a custom tailored threat prevention report policy and do autonomous threat prevention and performance tuning. So basically this is going through the entire IPS policy and it's cleaning it up. And it's not just IPS, we can do this for threat prevention. We can do this basically for the entire firewall. Uh, professional services, really IC has no limits as to what really we can do uh, to optimize the environment. So at this point, I am all set, all done with this presentation. Um, I can do the Q and A at this point. Anybody has any questions? Anybody wants me to touch on anything? I know I, I speak pretty fast, so. At any point, you know, I can go back. No, it looks good so far. I do have some questions for you. Um, what is the recommended timing for IPS frequent for update frequency? I mean, what's the default, and is there a deviation from that that's recommended? Um, so I believe the default is uh, twenty four hours. Um, really, it's going to be dependent on you. So I, I sent an example as. Um, you know, the, the IPS updates email. If you get an email from Checkpoint that your IPS, uh, that there is a new signature in the IPS that you can update, you can just manually go and update or you can just choose the frequency. It's, it's really up to, to you as an administrator what the frequency is. Okay. Um, getting all kinds of questions now, so I'm trying to keep up. Uh, when bypass under load is enabled, does it automatically re-enable when the load goes down? I believe so. Yes, that that's what makes it so dynamic. And I mean, it wouldn't make it any difference from IPS off if it wasn't dynamic in, in its own operations. Yep. Oh, and Tim just said the default is two hours. Two hours. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Uh, let's see. Someone said here that they've heard previously that detect and prevent consumed about the same amount of resources. Uh, and obviously you just said that detect consumes more. So why is that again? The detect is actually following the connection versus the prevent, which just stops the connection. Detect actually has to do inspection on it. Okay. So there's actual, yeah. Deeper inspection done on the packet rather than just dropping it. Right. Uh, oh, Tim here mentioned uh, there's a new checkpoint threat prevention specialist class available worldwide in early Q3. This class will cover real world use of IPS in heavy detail with many lab exercises. So if anybody is interested in that, maybe I can add that to my uh, follow-up email, Tim, I'll get offline with you. But uh, anybody interested in that, reach out to, you can reach out to me directly and I'll make sure you get the information. Um, let's see. Oh, here's an interesting one. Will Copilot AI functionality help with IPS tuning? Hmm. Um, I don't know just yet. I know, I know Copilot is definitely capable of a lot of advanced things. Um, I, I think it can do something close to that, but I just don't know if it can actually do that just yet. Yeah, I'm not sure either. That's an interesting question. Unless Tim jumps in again, and he knows. Uh, let's see. Can you talk about uh, and you talk about threat cloud threat extraction. What is actually sent to the cloud? Threat cloud threat extraction are two different things. So yeah, uh, I, I, IPS and threat cloud they work by IPS just having the, or threat cloud having the signatures and, and the known hashes and all the basically you know because IPS is is known some unknown but mainly known all of that is in the threat cloud and that's how you know those two work hand in hand. 
Uh, how do you register for IPS news and updates? So you can go to advisories.checkpoint.com and at the bottom should be a subscribe where you just type in your email and it, it subscribes. Yep. Let's see. You mentioned the override being less optimal. Can you expand on that? Yeah. So sometimes an administrator could set an override to, to detect. And of course, like we said, detect being more consuming, that would be less optimal, especially if it's, it's a protection that really doesn't need to be enabled. If you're not affected by it, if you don't have any systems internally, that would be affected by maybe an Adobe or, or something like that. Um, having that in an active is probably the better option because it's going to use less resources versus override or, or versus detect. I'm sorry. Yeah. Is there an easy way to find and disable unneeded protections? Like you said, you know, not that nobody would have this, but you don't have Adobe in your environment. So can you just easily find that out and disable that in your IPS profile? Yeah, so that's manually going in, going to IPS protections and sorting from performance impact and deciding if you need any of those enabled or it's using that uh, that custom view, that that CPR file and um, taking a look at what's in detect, what's in prevent and changing them from there. Um, definitely utilize follow-up. Follow-up is definitely going to be something that, that's good to use because it's going to have all those updated C uh, signatures in there where you can follow up on them and you can either choose to have them in detect or prevent automatically, but most of the time they're going to be in detect. So you're going to want to move those over to prevent at some point yeah. or inactive if they don't affect you. Uh, exception versus null profile from perspective of performance impact, which is better? I hmm. didn't quite follow that. Um. Yeah, I hard to say. Yeah, let me, uh, no, that person was anonymous. If you want to hit me directly, whoever sent that, I will, we can clarify and try and get you that answer. Uh, will the slides be available? Uh, um, I think we can get them available. I don't think there was anything secret in there, right? Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. Let yeah. me, um, let me get the link for the checkmates post here so I can uh, share that in the chat. Yeah, and I'll put that in the uh, follow up email too, Hector. So everybody okay. will get that. So we'll send that to you. Uh, uh, are there instructions for getting the CPR file? Do you mean yep. the, go ahead. That, that's what I'm going to be working on here. I'm going to put that into the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, Tim Hall just said, Tim, I should just unmute you. <laughs> <laughs> Blade-based exception and null profile are equal for performance. Signature-based exceptions do not help performance. Thank you, Tim. If anybody does not know who Tim Hall is, please go Google him. Very active uh, training class, uh, very active on checkmates. He knows more about checkpoint than most checkpoint people do. Oh, and he has, said he has no headset. Okay, Tim, you're off the hook. <laughs> uh, I think that covers it for questions, Hector. Uh, yeah, chat's disabled, but you can throw your question in the Q&A. Anything else comes in. All right. I think that covers it. Yeah, Thank you, Hector. Great information. Uh, of course. You know, like you said, you know, IPS is not a set it and forget it thing, right? It needs constant care and feeding, you know, so it's not something that is, it is something that you have to keep on top of. Um, but as Hector mentioned, we do have PS that can help you with, you know, optimizing it. But also we have managed services too. If you're a smaller shop, you don't have a sock, you know, we could definitely manage this for you and take it off of your hands to keep you protected, right? So um, again, thank you, Hector. We'll send a follow-up email with the reference content and the recording link. All these uh, SKs and other links we'll send out to you. Our next webinar will be in two weeks. That one will be on the value of full mesh networks with SASE private access. Uh, you'll see the invitation for that soon. But thanks again for joining us. We'll see you here next time. Enjoy your day. Thanks, Hector. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take Bye care. All.